Solo travel isn't easy, and that's what makes it worth doing. It teaches you to be where you are, a skill largely lost in our modern world. When traveling on your own, there's no past which others know. There's nobody dragging you to see the sights when you just want to relax. There's nobody you have to tell, get up or we're going to be late for the train. It's all on you. You'll make mistakes and dwell on them. You'll say yes to unexpected experiences that'll change you. You'll be uncomfortable. You'll feel alone. You'll make friends. You'll grow. On our own in a foreign place, our soul expands, pounding on its limiting walls. Our heart opens from mistakes which turn to lessons, awe which turns to love, wisdom gleaned from a mind that runs incessantly, wondering, why am I here? Oh, that's why. What am I doing? Whatever the fuck I want. That was stupid, but it's okay. You don't travel solo because you want to be comfortable. You travel solo because something out there beckons and it's worth discovering what that is. There's nothing so beautiful to me as looking inward while exploring outward in a new environment. It doesn't matter where it is. I love travel because I'm hungry to learn. And when traveling, I'm constantly learning. I'm a travel writer, but I'm less inclined to write about what to do, what to see. I'm more interested in how travel changes me. This story is about Thailand and how it made me feel. Travel often starts at an airport where wood and sails have turned to steel and wings. The airport, I imagine, like the ancient docks from which ships departed for foreign shores, denotes a certain feeling. For me, it's one of adventure. I arrived in Bangkok, picked up a Thai SIM card on the way to baggage claim. I think this is the first time I've done this. It always seems like a gimmick, but this time I thought, why not? The woman at the stand was kind. I looked up the currency rate in basic phrases. Sawati crop, hello. Kapkun crop, thank you. Chai, my, yes, no. Kortot, excuse me. Chio, cheers. That should hold me over, I thought. My flight from Osaka shared the same baggage claim with the flight from Sydney. New people, fresh faces, and I was one of them, solitary and observing. I'd be staying at a hostel in Bangkok's old town, and after several subway rides and a long walk along the dusty, bright road under construction, I found the side street on which it was located. The air was sultry like the Japanese summer. The sweat felt good. I stopped at a corner store near the hostel for some water. The owner, Ken, told me about the different sides of Bangkok, the old and the new, and how he grew up just down the road. His family has a little bar over there, which now his sister runs. Ken told me about the seasons in Bangkok. He asked if I wanted a beer. Soon, Ken, my friend. When choosing a hostel to book, I had a positive gut feeling about this one. Reviews usually tell me all I need to know. Clean, lively, solid location with a cafe downstairs. That's usually a good sign. It was perfect. Guests sat on the front porch when I arrived. The smell of coffee and tobacco, strong. Intermingled with the scent of weed. Cannabis became legal in Thailand in 2022, making it a rarity in Asia a region known for extreme repercussions regarding possessions of marijuana, especially in my country of residence, Japan. This was news to me, and I wasn't complaining. Granite walls, a big glass door, travelers coming and going. The place had style, modern touch, and cheerful energy, situated next to a charming bookstore. What could be better? I got into a conversation with a British lad at the check-in counter. He'd been working at the hostel for almost two years, content, laid back with a genuine smile. That was me, working at a hostel in Lisbon, Portugal two summers ago. I found my dorm, unpacked, and as dusk began to fall, I sauntered over to take Ken up on that beer. Setting out into my first night of 10 in a country that I didn't know would affect me so deeply. My time in Bangkok consisted of ample street food and golden evening light. Daily coconuts, mango with sticky rice spicy noodles, and fried insects on a stick. There was a night where a group of us from the hostel went to a local stadium to watch the Muay Thai fights, where the fighters were young, the stadium was rowdy, and the teams in each corner were lusting for victory. In the mornings, I would do a quick workout, baking in the rising sun on the hostel rooftop, and then have a coffee with, with other guests on the front porch. A joint or two may have floated around, and we'd just hang out. Later in the day, Cold drinks and street food were had on plastic street side tables, preceded by long walks along canals, rivers, 
colorful roads, and through crowded markets and shimmering temples. There were rides on backs of motorbikes in the night and in the day. You may hear many things about Bangkok, but shit, I liked it. Go for yourself, have a wander, and make your own judgment. The experiences of travel will always stay with me, but what stays with me the most is what I learn. And what I learn comes from the coalescence of people and place. For there are certain characteristics about Bangkok which call to certain people. The warm weather and joyful locals, the motorbikes and food, the freedom. Bangkok was the backdrop, but the people are the story. For it's the people I met which left a lasting impression on my heart. It's because of where we were, who we are, what we asked of life in this moment that brought it all together. I learned on this trip, perhaps more than on any other, that travel doesn't have to mean doing. I love traveling with my friends more than anything. However, this is something much easier to understand when traveling solo. For when alone, there isn't a pressure to do anything just for the sake of having an activity. Travel can just be being, being in a new place. During those Bangkok mornings, friends would come and go for the first few hours of the day, sitting on the porch, chatting, leaving, returning. I met beautiful souls from Israel, France, Germany, the US, Austria, Canada, the UK, and of course, Thailand. It seems we're all making changes in life because more often than not, that's what is happening when you travel. It could always just be a random trip, a quick break in the routine, but most of the people I met had just made a significant life change. We tell each other our stories, perhaps share some words of encouragement or advice, peace of our heart. There was one kid I met, an 18 year old from the UK. A group of us were sitting around chatting and he came over and asked very politely if we'd mind if he joined the conversation. Where else does somebody do that but at the hostel? He was 18 years old, traveling alone, and did it in such a polite, charming way. I was taken aback. Solo travel either makes you fear more or it makes you bold. And when you're bold, you realize there is nothing to fear. When you're bold like this kid was, you'll realize that there are so many cool fucking people in this world. You don't really realize that until you get out there and you face it yourself. Social media inundates us with the same updates over and over. The little worlds we know on there that are so familiar. The news floods our emotions with darkness and gloom, making us believe it's dangerous to travel, dangerous to live, dangerous to think differently. So you better stay home, shut the blinds, and hope for the best. Fuck that. Get out there, get bold, and you'll realize how many people are still living, still smiling, still fighting to be good. There are people like you, people like me, human beings who hear the noise too, but they get out there anyway, because life is too short to live in fear. This world is good. I believe it from the bottom of my heart. There are people whose stories blow me away, young travelers and seasoned veterans, gritty and full of raw life experience, seldom found on the other side of the screen. Seldom gleaned without going yourself, or slowly but surely, you become one of those legends with a story to tell. This is why I'm fulfilled living the life I'm leading. It's why I call myself a writer, an explorer of the world, a dreamer. Not because it's my dream to simply be a writer, as if writing is something I love so dearly, but because I love life, real, true, sincere life. I'm a writer because I hope to have stories to tell. I do feel pressure when I travel, which is both a beauty and a blessing in our modern world. I want to document what I see, taking pictures and notes. Sometimes this can feel like a burden though, but I tell myself, just have the experience. Document it if it feels right, but just have the experience. What is beautiful, vital, and essential to the story will remain. I came back to Japan a bit of a shell of myself. Traveling does this to me for it moves me in such a way that I need time to understand what I've experienced. Maybe that's okay. But traveling is this wild thing which moves you in ways you didn't expect to be moved. And when it's over, normal siege doesn't feel the same. For now, there's something new you crave. Novelty itself. Serendipitous adventures and late night dialogues with strangers. Normalcy is no longer normalcy, for you've changed. It feels like there's this hole in you, a longing for something that's no more, something you didn't even know existed a week or two ago. People you missed you had zero awareness of before setting off, unaware of what was to come. But it's not a hole in you. It's emotion to be used, a force unseen without size or color or definition. Love, asking to be fire for the start of something new. 
So let the dust settle. Let your heart rage. Let the thoughts fly free toward the storm. Let them coast in it and get lost. The sun will rise again soon, and it will be all the more beautiful for what is past.